Hello, welcome to the next section, classification. In this section, we will cover a variety of classification models, including logistic regression, K nearest neighbors, and decision trees. Now we move on to the first video of this section, logistic regression. In this video, we are going to first learn about logistic regression, then we look at a few examples where we will be cleaning and profiling the data, creating our training and test sets, and finally, we will train and test the logistic regression model. As with regression, classification programs come with their own set of jargon. There is some overlap with terms used in regression, but there are also some new terms specific to classification. They are categories, labels or classes, binary classification, multi-class classification, labeled data or annotated data. Logistic regression. The first classification model that we are going to explore is called logistic regression. As you can tell from the name, this method is based on a regression. However, this particular regression uses a function that is particularly well suited to classification problems. This is also a simple and interpretable model, which makes it a great first choice when solving classification problems. The function that you see here is called the logistic function, and it gives logistic regression its name. This is the code to implement it in Go. When we build and run this, we get the result as 0.73. Let's plot the logistic function. For this, we have created another example, example2 file. Here we have used gonum.org slash v1 slash plot. Let's dissect our main code. We first create a new plot and then create the plotter function. We then add this plotter function to the plot. Post that, we set the axes ranges as these functions don't set the axes ranges automatically. And finally, we save the plot in a PNG format. As you can see, here we have the logistic regression function that we saw in the previous example file. Compiling and running this plotting code creates this graph. As you can see, this function has the step-like behavior that we are looking for to model the steps between classes A and B, imagining that A corresponds to 0, 0.0 and B corresponds to 1.0. To see this, let's take a step back and consider how we might model P, the probability of one of the classes A or B occurring. One way to do this would be to model the log of the odds ratio, log of P by 1 minus P linearly, where the odds ratio tells us how the presence or absence of class A has an effect on the presence or absence of class B. Let's just assume that we want to model this linearly with the help of this formula. Now if we take the exponential of this odds ratio, we get this equation. This is what we get when we simplify the preceding equation. If you look at the right-hand side of this equation, you will see that our logistic function has popped up. This equation then gives some formal underpinning to our assumption that the logistic function would be good for modeling the separation between the two classes, A and B. Thus, creating a logistic regression model involves finding the logistic function that maximizes the number of observations that we can predict with the logistic function. Let's look at a logistic regression example now. The dataset that we are going to use to illustrate a logistic regression is data corresponding to loans issued by Lending Club, and it can be found in its original form at this link. The data looks like this. Here we are going to work with a trimmed down and simplified version of this data, including only two columns, FICO.range and interest.rate. Our goal for this exercise will be to create a logistic regression model that will tell us, for a given credit score, if we can get a loan at or below a certain interest rate. Let's write a Go program that will clean our data for a given interest rate, 12% for our example. Then the actual cleaning functionality is shown in the code. Here we have used encoding CSV to parse the values. Here we first open the CSV and read the data from the file. We put the cleaned data in an output file called clean underscore loan underscore data dot CSV. Then we create a CSV writer and then sequentially move the rows writing out the parsed values. We then write the header to the output file and initialize a slice to hold our parsed values. We then parse the FICO scores and interest rates and write the data to record file. Post that, 
we write the record to the output file and finally write any buffered data to the underlying writer. Compiling this and running it confirms our desired output. We have our data in the desired format. Great. Now let's gain a little more intuition about our data by creating histograms for the FICO score and interest rate data and calculating summary statistics. For this, we have created another example, example4 folder, and created the code. Here we utilize github.com slash knirin slash gota slash dataframe to calculate summary statistics and gonum.org slash v1 slash plot to generate histograms. Now you must be aware of the starting few steps, so we will now directly look at the other steps now. We use the describe method to calculate summary statistics for all of the columns in one shot, and we then output this, the summary statistics. Then we create a histogram for each of the columns and create a plotter. Values, value, and fill it with the values from the respective column of the data frame. We then make the plot and set its title. Finally, we create histogram, normalize it, and add it to our plot, and finally, we save it as a PNG image. When we build and run it, we get this result and corresponding histograms. Let's look at the graph now. This is the histogram of class, and this is the histogram of FICO score. Similar to our examples in the previous section, we now need to split our data into a training and test set. So again, we have created another example to do this. Here we once again use github.com slash knirin slash gota slash dataframe to do this. We infer the types of columns and then calculate the number of elements in each set. We then create the subset indices and enumerate the training and test indices. We then create subset data frame, a map that will be used in writing the data and create the respective files. Once this is done, we save the filtered dataset file and create a buffered writer. Finally, we will create a buffered writer. Compiling and running this results in two files with our training and test examples. Now let's create a function that trains a logistic regression model. For this, we have created another example. The function then outputs the optimized weights for the logistic regression model. The logistic regression fits a logistic regression model. We then initialize and optimize the coefficients or weights of the logistic regression model. We then initialize a variable to accumulate error for this iteration and make predictions for each label and accumulate error. Here we get the features of corresponding label, calculate the error, and update the feature weights. As you can see, this function is relatively compact and simple. This will keep our code readable and allow people on our team to quickly understand what is happening in our model without hiding things in a black box. To train our logistic regression model on our training dataset, we have added this code before the logistic regression function. Let's look at this code now. Here we parse our training file with encoding slash CSV and then supply the necessary parameters to our logistic regression function. As usual, we open the training dataset, create a new CSV reader reading from the opened file and read all the CSV records. Feature, data and labels will hold all the float values. Feature index will track the current index of the feature's matrix values. We then sequentially move the rows into the slices of floats and skip the header row. After that, we add the FICO score and intercept. We then increment our feature row and add class label. Post that, we form a matrix from the features, train the logistic regression model, and output our trained logistic formula to standard out. Compiling and running this training functionality results in the trained logistic regression formula. We can then utilize this formula directly to make predictions. Remember, however, that this model makes a prediction for the probability of getting the loan. As such, we need to utilize a threshold for the probability in making predictions. This type of prediction is implemented in our next example, example seven. Let's look at it now. This is our predict function that makes a prediction based on our training logistic regression model. Using this predict function, 
we can evaluate our trained logistic regression model using one of the evaluation metrics. In this case, we use accuracy as shown in the code. We first open the test example and create new CSV reader. The observed and predicted will hold the past observed and predicted value. This line will track rows for logging. We will then read in the records looking for unexpected types in the columns and read in a row and check that we are at the end of the file. We then skip the header and read the observed values. We then make the corresponding prediction append the record to slice. This variable will hold our count of true positive and true negative values. We then accumulate the true positive negative count, calculate the accuracy and output the accuracy to standard output. Running this test on our data results in 83% accuracy. Nice! 83% accuracy is not bad for a machine learning model that we implemented in about 30 lines of Go. With this simple model, we were able to predict whether, given a certain credit score, loan applicants would be accepted for a loan with less than or equal to 12% interest. Not only that, we did it with real-world messy data from a real company. With that, you have successfully learned about linear regression.